Okay, so anyone who's not been watching my YouTube videos or live streams, uh, I've been working on a breadboard computer provided by Ben Eater. He has a kit that he sells, and he also has a few tutorial videos that he's currently working on. This is a 6502 CPU, which is actually in like the Atari 400, 800, 2600, you know, all, the, all those old Atari's retro computers. It's in the Commodore 64, the Apple II, I think the Amiga, maybe the Tandy. Um, it's in a lot of stuff from, from back in the day when I was a kid. And in fact, it's such a popular chip, it's still being produced today. It's being used in a lot of devices. So you can actually buy this chip uh, in a variant of the old, uh, the old CPUs that were back in the day. Um, it's not a fast, it's not a fast chip, but it is a good chip that uh, has a simple instruction set that you can actually interact with a lot of devices. Uh, today, most kids probably play with Arduinos, which is pretty much uh, easier and friendly to use. You just write code similar to, uh, I guess today it's C, but most people will probably think of it as JavaScript. It's the same kind of syntactical layout. Um, when you first approach it. So the goal is to write out hello world with machine language. Uh, in the last video, we switched over from machine language to assembly, but we still compile into machine language. And we're writing out machine language to the ROM chip using a, uh, I'm not sure what you call these, but you can write to your microchip using these things. Uh, so you can see right now the this display here actually says hello world ben has not gotten to uh the lcd display yet he's just gotten to the uh the top portion here of how how to wire all these up the wiring is a bit different than what he's displaying but it's the same schematic it's just uh i want it to be able to get in here and uh, hook up the arduino just to monitor the data going back and forth and I was running out of um, available pins as more more chips were actually added to the board so I can actually turn off the power turn it back on and you see the display has nothing so if I hit this button it resets the CPU and you'll notice it writes out hello world it's amazing hello world is famous uh, because it's one of the first things you try and do when you write in a new language that you're unfamiliar with. And quite a lot of languages have various steps that you need to go through before you can actually write out hello world on the screen. It seems like it's such a simple thing to do. And in fact, it really is once you understand a language. But when you first approach a language, it's perhaps one of the hardest things to do. But you have a set goal to accomplish. Um, so yeah, we don't have RAM set up yet, so I can't uh, have any variables in memory or, or do any looping. I did run into a lot of problems where it seemed like uh, data lines were in, in reverse order or something like that. I had to think of how to save the bits or how to write the bits in reverse order. And then uh, was it the nibbles? nibbles and bytes and bits there there's like three different ways that you uh interact with the data in fact i actually uh one of the good things was the ascii output of the characters for these their values are similar to ascii lookup tables so uh looking at the binary data with the hex editor the ascii printout actually showed me uh the the correct letters that were coming out and would actually show me when a letter was wrong <laughs> in fact uh when i wrote out hello world the d was actually showing up as an e and i had to go back and make a fix but uh that's pretty much how far i got today uh there, we need to get, we need to still get go further i'm excited to see what else he does with the the ram the uh one megahertz quant crystal and a few buttons and I want to see how he actually wired this up and interacted with it so um, yeah I'm really excited to actually get 
get the, the computer in its final form, like a Pokemon, <laughs> uh, and actually start working on my own little retro homebrew computer. So that's going to be a very exciting project once that gets up and running. I do have some ideas, maybe com combining uh, e-paper for a graphical display um, with an LCD uh, screen just for text and data entry. So, well, not data entry, but to display the text and uh, probably some kind of rudimentary keyboard for data entry. All right, so uh, I'm gonna close with that. Look for, I'm looking forward to doing more videos regarding this with a recap on what I have been working on. And uh, yeah, fun, fun stuff. Until next time, bye.